If you've spent any amount of time looking at your or anyone else's Team Fortress 2 inventory, then you've probably noticed that item names will appear in various different colours. These colours represent what is known as item qualities, and they aren't just there for show. With every colour having a specific meaning behind it, and, as with all things in Team Fortress 2, some qualities are much rarer than others, with their own history and interesting trivia behind them. And, just as a quick note before we get into it, I do plan to cover glitched items in a future video, so for the sake of this video, I'll only be talking about the intended qualities and their meanings. Let's start by quickly going over the most common and obvious ones, and then move on to the ones that some of you might not have even heard of. The most normal quality is called... Normal. It's so normal, in fact, literally every account in TF2 has normal quality items, because these are just your stock items. It's represented by this dull grey colour. Next up is the most numerous item quality, known as Unique, which is kind of funny given how there are hundreds and thousands of copies of each of these items, because this is the quality given to almost every regular item in the game. Weapons, cosmetics, even crates and other tools, whether they're bought from the Manco store, obtained through crafting, or awarded via random drops. They'll almost always have this yellow, coloured, unique quality. The name likely comes from the fact that originally there were only stock items which everybody had, and therefore they didn't need to be tracked in any way. Once unique items were added, the developers needed a way to know who had what item. Thus, each item has a unique ID. These IDs can be seen on item tracking websites like tf2items.com. That's right, your random Girati you've had in your backpack for six months from a random drop you don't even remember is special and unique at least in exactly the same way that almost every other Gerati ever dropped, crafted or bought is. Genuine is this muddy green colour. This is a quality that was added to represent promotional items to distinguish them from their non-promotional counterparts. For example, the Conniver's Kunai Fan of War and all of these other items were originally added to the game as a reward for people who pre-ordered Total War Shogun 2. To represent the versions of these items that were awarded in this way, as opposed to those that were crafted from item drops or bought in the store, the promotional ones are all marked genuine. And of course, this goes the same for many other promotional items in TF2 that can also be obtained other ways. But not every genuine item has a unique counterpart. Sometimes the quality is given to an item that only exists as genuine, but the overall rule for this quality is that it is reserved for an item that was obtained through some sort of cross-promotional purchase or event. Haunted. This quality is represented by a very bright greeny-blue colour, and it can only be found on certain Halloween-restricted items, typically known as costumes. Haunted items generally aren't awarded for any particular reason. When you do something that unlocks a Halloween costume, such as open a Halloween package earned by completing Miraz missions, there's a chance that that unlocked costume will be haunted. There are some exceptions where haunted costumes were or still are given as a bonus item or guarantee, such as from the 2012 Eerie crates, but for the most part they're randomly given in place of regular Halloween costumes. Despite being cosmetically no different to their unique counterparts, they do have a slight functional difference beyond just being rarer, in so much as that they can be sold on the Steam community market, as where unique quality items can't. Next up, we're getting into the much more interesting trivia, Vintage, represented by this dark blue colour. In September 2010, Valve introduced item trade in crate unboxing and the Manco store in the Manconomy major update. Due to these new, significant means of obtaining items, any item that was already in a player's backpack before this update was converted from unique quality to vintage quality, to signify that it existed before this update, hence the name Vintage. Most promo items were excluded from this treatment, such as Bill's Hats, Earbirds and the Gibbus, or Jibus, if you think being technically correct is the best kind of correct. Instead, these promo items only exist in unique quality because genuine hadn't been added to the game yet with the exception of glitched variants, which as I said, we'll talk about in a different episode. Despite there being a pretty clear-cut and blanket decision to convert all existing items to vintage at that point in time, there was actually a second wave in March 2011, where Valve added a list of crafting recipes to the game that were otherwise undocumented, and they simultaneously reduced the cost of most of those crafting recipes. To show acknowledgement to the items that had been crafted before this time, those items were also converted to the vintage quality. There have also since been some one-off vintages, such as the additional version of the Pyrovision goggles for those who played around the time of the original Pyromania update. 
A final bit of interesting trivia for vintage is that some hats actually had the word vintage in the name before this quality was added. The result is what the community has dubbed double vintage, with the in-game names of items now reading Vintage Vintage Tyrolean and Vintage Vintage Merryweather, respectively. With the introduction of in-game skins, Valve started using the quality known as decorated to denote skinned weapons. Instead of a single colour for the titles of these items in the game, there are six colours which are dependent on that specific skin's rarity. There are a lot of interesting variables actually behind how the patterns of decorated weapons are generated, but again, that is something for another video. Otherwise, these are functionally identical to their unique, vintage or genuine counterparts, although strange variants usually have a cool cosmetic stat counter on their in-game model. But what is a strange variant? Unlike the qualities that we've talked about so far, Strange is the first quality that actually has a different in-game functionality compared to the unique or other variants. It is in fact the TF2 word for an item that counts your stats, usually the kills. The cool thing about these items is that their names change as they rank up. For most items, this starts at just Strange when you've got zero kills, and it goes all the way up to Hale's Own for 8,500 kills. The extra cool thing is that certain items have their own unique ranks, such as the Holiday Punch, an item which can cause attacked enemies to automatically laugh, with ranks such as Thigh Slapping and Grin Inducing. Items which are cosmetic, or weapons that can't otherwise get kills, instead count things relevant to whatever their action is. For example, the Mad Milk will count enemies soaked, and the Spirit of Giving will count how many of TF2's random gifts known as Secret Saxons that you've given out. From playing Man vs Machine mode, you can be awarded with bot killer or even ultra rare Australium items. Despite having prefixes to their name, these items will always be strange, and therefore will have the standard orange colour name that all strange quality items do. Most strange items are strange when they come into existence, usually coming from a crate or the previously mentioned rewards from MVM missions. But there are also a series of strange fires that can be used to convert an otherwise non-strange item into a strange one such as the strange bacon grease that converts regular frying pans into kill counting strange quality. Almost everyone will no doubt be aware of this next quality already, but next up is unusual. Unusual is the word for hats, taunts and weapons with an ever-growing series of visual particle effects revolving around them in-game. And there is currently over 200 different effects available. Outside of glitches or very few incidents where Valve have rewarded community members, which we'll talk about in a moment, Unusuals are exclusively obtained from uncrating, with a typical 1% chance of getting unusual with every box opening. The one exception to this rule is of course the unusual horseless headless horseman's head taker, and the unusual haunted scrap metal required to craft it, neither of which have any particle effect at all. Believe it or not, these were actually added about a month after the introduction of regular unusual hats. So why did Valve decide to use the same quality despite not having any particle effect at all? Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. This very red, red colour represents a collector's item. Despite being added back in 2013, collectors isn't a quality that you'll probably see very often. And that's because not only did the tool required to make collector's items called a chemistry set stop dropping back in 2014, but because in addition to the tool, you actually need 200 copies of the same item to make a collector's quality one. For example, if I wanted to create a collector's festive gerati, I would first have to source the discontinued chemistry set, and not just any chemistry set, but the festive gerati specific one. Then I would have to buy, trade, or otherwise obtain 200 unique festive gerati to use with the chemistry set, which would all get consumed and instead replaced by one single collector's festive gerati. Other than its quality label, it is functionally identical to a regular festive gerati. Shout out to Shork, the gerati loving legend who provided this footage. Despite the limited drop period of chemistry sets, there are quite a variety of them for both weapons and cosmetics. So if you are an actual collector of a specific item and you want a way to prove it, then collector's quality is made especially for you. To round off this video, we've got the three rarest and most unique qualities in the game. Community quality is one so rare that I would hazard a guess the majority of players have never even seen one in game. Unless of course you spend time playing with TF2 community legends, or are in fact one yourself. Because community items are special versions of items awarded directly by Valve to players who have done something significant for the TF2 world. There's no one single specific thing that will earn you a community quality item, 
but they have been awarded over the years to creators of major community projects such as Critzcast Podcast, the competitive broadcaster X Television, and item marketplace owners like Marketplace.tf. Community quality items have also gone to dedicated translators, creators of Steam avatars, and organizers of charity events. There is one special item that is always community quality, the Wikicap. And as its name suggests, it is given to players who have made significant contributions to the community maintained wiki. There are also a couple of one-off community quality items awarded for very specific reasons, such as the community spine chilling skull granted as a Make-A-Wish foundation gift to a young cancer survivor. Similar but different to the community quality is self-made. Represented by the same light green colour on the in-game menus, self-made items are given to community contributors of in-game items, where they receive a self-made version of the very item that they helped to create. For community-created unusual effects, which are of course not an item on their own, there is a unique hat called the Unusual Cap, with the contributor's created effect applied to it. As this is the only way to get this hat, all unusual caps are actually self-made quality, as opposed to unusual. Contributors to maps that are added to the game are given a self-made map stamp of their map. And creators of items that can be unboxed are also given a self-made key and case along with the item itself. But the coolest thing about both community and self-made items is that they all have their very own unique cosmetic particle effect, in addition to any unusual effects, known as community sparkle. It is quite subtle compared to typical unusual effects, but it is much cooler, given its limited availability and the fact that when you see it, you know that that person has earned it by doing something awesome for the game that you love, or by creating the very weapon, skin, effect, or whatever it is that you're looking at. I have of course saved the best until last, and I have a feeling that a few of you will have been waiting for this one, and despite its rarity, I reckon more viewers will know about these than Community and Self Made. I am of course talking about Valve quality items, Represented by this pink purpley colour, Valve items are exclusive to, you guessed it, Valve employees. The thing about working with Valve of course means that you can do whatever the hell you want with your game's code. And that's exactly how Valve weapons work. Robin Walker, one of TF2's original creators, has a rocket launcher for example that does, and I'm not joking, 1,009,900% extra damage and other ridiculous stats like 250 HP on kill. It even has a particle effect that otherwise is used only for in-game explosion, which is labelled on the weapon as flying bits. The truth is you probably never will see this quality for real in-game. Bear in mind that community servers can have all sorts of mods and plugins that make people look like they have items that they don't really own. So if you see a Valve weapon in a random CP Orange or Minecraft trade server, chances are it's not actually Robin Walker hanging out on an afternoon off work. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like this one about a different bit of interesting TF2 trivia, or this one, which is relatable to all gamers. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and otherwise I'll see you soon. Thank you everyone.